Today's video is going to be more a thought exercise rather than an actual tutorial, but tutorials are to follow. But this is just what I've been thinking about for the last couple of weeks and what I've been implementing myself with the problem of knowledge management. So the problem that I want to ponder and share with you guys is the problem of what we do with data question mark what do we do with data from the input and when it enters when it enters our personal knowledge management system or our sphere of influence how can we turn that information that made us stop at the time and go hmm that was interesting that thought was interesting the idea that i had was interesting it's the internal you screaming to yourself saying hey this is something i want to cultivate but what i found in my life is in the past when i come across those ideas i write it down on a piece of paper or i try to put it in a specific folder and nothing really happens with it because at the time I'm not willing to sit down and immediately start writing about it or conceptualizing ideas surrounding it. I am a very lazy person by heart and I am looking for cheat codes in life. I do not want to work hard but I'm willing to put in the work so that in the future I don't have to work hard. And I came across the Zettelkasten methodologies and the Slipbox system and for this video, I'm going to talk about and slipbox interchangeably. I see them as the same thing. I know that the slipbox system is a more modern version of it, but I'm just going to call it Zettel. So with the Zettel framework, something I got exposed to after I started with Obsidian and I got a little bit addicted to the system and it did not work for me. I watched a couple of videos, I read a couple of articles and the ideas, even though when I was reading it, it made sense. But when I tried to implement it, something was not clicking. And that's something, and within the whole system of Zettel, is what I want to discuss today and how to how to have a modernized Zettel, which I call LogRedis, which stands for Log, Relate, and Discover. So let's start with the inputs. So throughout your day, because I'm an advocate of the daily notes first, might not be something for everybody, but I do think you come across ideas or everybody comes across ideas every single day that holds value that they don't want to throw into the void and never see again. So I would still advocate people to start with the daily notes, even if it's just to capture these logs that we're going to talk about. So for myself, I use a Kindle and I find the easiest way to get notes from books that I read into Obsidian. It's extremely easy. Everything is automated. All I need to do is on the Kindle, when I find an interesting passage, highlight it, make a note, hashtag on something, and I'm already doing my logging. Am I connecting because I have set up the format in Readwise to pull in a log format automatically, which means I don't have to do anything for those notes who show up in my obsidian. Podcast, I listen to podcasts and I find something interesting. You have chats with people, you watch TV series, YouTube videos on obsidian, you read articles, you just think by yourself. All of these ideas, what do you do with those ideas? Do you cultivate them or do you throw them into the void? Because I know I had, I've had so many ideas in the past. I, the time when I'm thinking about it, like, oh, this is a wonderful idea. I could make so much money from this. I'm going to be wealth. I'm going to be a super genius. And then a couple of weeks later, I remember having a good idea, but I can't remember what that good idea was. So where Zettel comes into play is day for the original Zettel before computers were invented. Well, it was invented, but not widely used when did not have the software. You took notes on pieces of paper and those pieces of paper would be similar to what we're trying to do with this log. You find something interesting, you write it down and you write the source. Luckily with the digital world, we it's easier to reference the original source. So in a log, we want a reference to the video, reference to the book from Readwise, a reference to the article, reference to why this thought came to be. And we want to log it in our Obsidian. Some of, some of it is automatic. I'm going to show you for the Readwise portion of it and the Readwise reader, which I've also started playing around with. There's a lot of potential to automate a lot of these things. But if you don't want to go that advanced, just the normal log is fine. So step one, consume information throughout your day. And when it makes you go at that internal, give you that internal feeling of, hmm, interesting, cool, go to your Obsidian and log it. And when it gets here, what do we do with that information? Is information just there? Is Are we ever going to use it again? And this is also where 
the past note-taking adventures like journaling type things never worked for me because it felt like a once-off entry, never to be seen again. But with these logs, because we can assign hashtags to them and in the logs themselves, we can relate to other notes already. We are not just logging, we also relating. So log readies, log, we log something, reference to the original source, and then we want to relate two things. And that's where the hashtag and the linking to actual notes come into play. And then you can create evergreen notes. And we'll go through a couple of examples, but evergreen notes or atomic notes or permanent notes, whatever terminology you want to use, is just a note that is usable for future projects and is ever improving, ever changing. So let's say we have logs related to hashtag on health morning routine or hashtag on morning routine. You can use those logs to build permanent evergreen atomic notes, or you can just not do that and leave it in a log because the log in a sense is also close enough to every note because you can make the connections in the logs themselves. But yeah, this is something you would need to play around with. I'm still playing around with it. And then when we have the evergreen or logs, we can create MOCs. And that's where the beauty comes in is if we have enough gravity of a specific tag or a specific log that we can see like, okay, there's a lot of logs relating to this note. Let's say on health, on health dash supplements. Let's say we are very interested in the different supplements in order to improve our health. We can see how many notes we've taken, how many thoughts we've logged related to that subject. And we create an MSC and we use data view to pull in all the logs associated with that from wherever it is in your vault. As long as it's an obsidian in the right format, the right log format, we are A4 away. And then the idea is that this log release system where the information gets time to germinate and just mix around and grow organically without it feeling like effort, you'll get output out of it you'll start making connections. And if you make connections in your PKM, it becomes more representative of how your brain works. There's a lot of different links linking to at face level things that should not be related, but you know why they should be related. And those connections make for novel ideas and novel ideas makes for innovation. It makes for things that you can give back into the world. It's it's almost like a machine. This log release system is a machine that works for you instead of you trying to push it. You can just enjoy the initial investment that you gave and put into the original work that you put into the system to build a robust system. You can reap the benefits for years to come. The bigger it gets, the more value you'll get out of it. And I really do believe this is a game changer, something that we did not have just a couple of years ago. So now that we have the overall picture, let's go into a couple of examples of how I see the system working. Although you might have been doing something similar, I'd like to put a word on it, log readies, so you can conceptualize in your mind like how information should flow, how the connections should work, how information that you capture is not just wasted information, it gets used at other places in random ways that you would see the output later on. So let's go to a couple of examples. It might be stupid examples, but I think it will get the point across and you can see how you can relate it to other areas, not just play or interest or hobbies, but also your work life or professional career related to notes or logs. So you are building a house. In a couple of months, you're expected to move in and you always wanted to fill it to the brim with plants once you have your own house. You want that mother to look like a jungle. But here's the problem. You know you are a serial procrastinator. You won't start looking for information until months after you've gotten them and you don't want to spend any extra time now to sit down and try to research plants. The objective is to find out what you want in the different rooms. What type of plants do you enjoy? What type of plants do you enjoy looking at? What would be good for that environment? How to take care of plants once you have them? How much sunlight do they need? Things like that. You don't want to sit down now and just go through the whole process because that feels like a chore. So. The solution to this problem is YouTube and Instagram or wherever you consume information digitally. It can even be just conversations with other people where the algorithm is also tailored towards your, your interests because people around you would know that you are looking to 
gets new plants. So in a way that algorithm, that social algorithm is also tuned towards your hobbies and your interests. But you've noticed in the past that you tend to follow people with things that you like to see. So if you like to see houses with lots of plants and design layouts of like how people take care of their plants and you find it interesting, you'll see more of that. But do you do anything with that information? Probably not. So why not turn that into a helping hand rather than just pure entertainment? So every time you pass a reel about plants that piques your interest, it's something that you like, it's a type of plant that you like, you put it into the log system, you attach a, has the, a hashtag on houseplant and you can put another couple of hashtags to show what room you want it to be in. You can even use square brackets notation in order to link it to a note that you already have. And now the process of just scrolling mindlessly through social media might become productive because you are doing something with that information. And some of these reels or videos or bits of information that you capture might by itself turn into a permanent note, atomic note. By itself, you want to create it. But let's say you really like this type of plant and you decide, cool, that's definitely a plant I want for my house. Let's make a permanent note about it. And you create the atomic permanent evergreen note, whatever you want to call it. And this is going to be a typical note where you just have, this is what this plant is about. Here's links, here's how to take care of it. Here's what the sunshine requirements are and you attach methylated fields. You can do that or you can leave it to the last step. And then over time, you will have abundance of information catered towards you done by this nice little butler called yourself from the past. And you have all this information. If it's not in permanent notes, we'll have a data view query pulling in all the logs into this MOC. So now you have all the information that you collected over months instead of trying to scourge through the internet looking for the type of plants that piques your interest. Rather, you've just done it organically throughout the last couple of months. And then you get to your final output, which is a lovely house for yourself. Great. Second example, very similar. You want to become a better cook. What do you need in order to become a better cook? You need recipes, you need skills, you need lessons, you need the type of equipment that you need. And same thing, you follow people that make good food, that knows what type of kitchen way you need in order to make it, that makes the type of food that you would dream or want to make or want to cultivate the skill of doing and they have all the recipes ready. What do you do with that information? Probably just send it to somebody else that have a similar interest, but nothing really happens with it. And then you always come to a night where you have the motivation to cook, but you don't know a recipe because you didn't write anything. So again, just put it into your log. Once you find a good recipe, make a note about it, capture what the, the meal was like if you decide to make it in the meantime. And then we're going to have an MOC, let's say for different cuisines. So let's say you have an Asian MOC, Italian MOC for food, and you build out your toolkit for making food. And the end result is you being a better cook. And again, it doesn't feel like work. If you ever try to look for a specific recipe that you don't know if you're going to enjoy, it's a struggle. But if you've seen something on somebody, somebody's Instagram or YouTube, or wherever you consume your information that you trust, that part is already sold for you by, again, this nice little butler called yourself from the past. Last example, what if you don't have an objective in mind. Well, just you consuming, talking to people, you're going to inevitably come into contact or talk more about subjects that you find interesting. You might not know a lot about, but it piques your interest. And even for these, just tag them the best you can. Link them to notes the best you can. For this scenario, let's say you've come to realize that you are getting quite a lot of gravity surrounding the hashtag on magic. So this could just be a childlike interest that you have that when you scroll through social media, you talk to people, you read a blog post, it, it navigates towards the subject. So take those logs. Let yourself have the opportunity to explore in the future. You might not ever get to it and it's fine. But over time, you'll see that the on magic hashtag have grown. And it shows that inner you, the, the guy lurking inside of you are yearning to become a magician. So this is just another way to organically get closer to what you enjoy, that stuff that you have energy for. And then we can obviously create permanent notes, evergreen notes, atomic notes, whatever you want to call it for these different subjects. And then 
Finally, you can become a magician and make all your parents' disappointments and you disappear. So this is obviously taking the hobby approach to things, but you can use this in your professional career as well. What I tend to focus on is things that give you energy rather than takes away. I find that most people's professional careers, there's a lot of things that drains the energy, that it feels like work. I need to speak to other people that have a job, which they absolutely love and it ties into their hobbies and interests. So what I also want to advocate for is let's try and find the things that we have energy for, that we have a competitive advantage. And one way to get closer to that person that don't feel drained to go to the office is to play around with your interests that you get naturally drawn to. So these are my three stories and I hope you can make sense of them and how the structure works. But the log is quite simple. It is just a one-liner of information that you start tagging at stage one. It makes, it forces you to think about where could the potential future connections be. So to come back to the Logrides system, it stands for log, relate, and discover. And let's first talk about the log. So the log is the first step in the chain, is the content acquisition phase, is where you consume data from books, podcasts, chats with people, movie series, articles, YouTube videos, your own thoughts. It could be ideas that's captured anywhere that you force yourself to have a channel or a door into your obsidian or PKM of choice. So for the log, the log and the relate piece of it ties in together with our log system. And that's something that's going to look like this. So we have a couple or an example of one of my daily logs. And the first one would be Instagram Shorts. This video, it is on music to play. So that's just indicated that it's something that I want to play on the piano or guitar. About a guy showing you how to play Red Hot Chili Peppers song. So there I already used the double square brackets notation because I know I want to make a note about Red Hot Chili Peppers someday. So I really make the link for the next one. Chicken curry Insta video. That's a link to a video on food on cooking curry, but how to make a simple chicken curry and rice dish. Seems like an easy recipe with simple spices. And they also mentioned a knife set. And then I made a sub log entry to the log entry. And because it's a parent child, the food video would capture the on knives on kitchen knives, but the on kitchen knives would just be a one line entry basically by itself. It works quite nicely. And then the third one is a log entry on a YouTube video that I'm watching. And this is quite nice because it's also a video on Obsidian on presenting, so I can make as many hashtags as I want. It might look a little bit cluttered, but you want to make sure that you be able to make the connections when you want to retrieve it. You should always think in the retrieving mindset of where will I in the future, if I'm looking for this, where would I find this? So so more in this case, I would say is always better, but now we need to talk about the different types of logs according to me. So all of these ideas might change in the future, but this is the way I see it at the current moment. And I'm hoping you guys give me some feedback on this as well. But in my mind, there's two types of logs. There's record keeping logs. So that's how much water am I drinking? How much of this exercise am I doing in a week? It's something that you can basically tally up or review in a year's time that would give you information about the past. It is a retrospect exercise that you can then use to improve future projects or future habits. And then we have ideation logs, which most of this would be it's, it's information for the future. It's information to improve something, to add to something. It's ideas. It's ideas that you want to intermingle with your own life, with your own brain. and. Yeah, that's according to me, I, I can easily break it up into those two. Record keeping logs is something that's like, hey, here's a place that I visited on this day. Hey, here's how much water I drank. Hey, here's the quality of sleep I'm getting. Ideation logs is stuff for the future. So log relates, discover, log reduce. We've gone through a couple of theoretical examples on how you can use this framework. And we've gone through a couple of log entries, but we still haven't gotten to the MOCs. The output is something we'll have more concrete examples on at a later stage. But from the MOCs, we can see how the outputs can then change into something that is considered an output, like a blog article or something like that. So let's go to a daily note and give you an example of 
how I like to capture information on a daily basis and it looks something like this. So for my daily log on the 25th, I would normally have my pictures here and then my log would be something like this. I had a link about different people's opinions and how to incorporate Zetzel and then I have like a nice little photo or diagram that I pull from the web and what I'm interested in for this example is this one. So I watched a video on YouTube from Ali Abrokin about the origin of Parkinson's law which states that work and effort falls the time you allocate to it. And then I put a tag, it says hashtag on productivity, hashtag on time management, creating a new node called productivity. So it's just an idea, these nodes aren't created yet. But I can see how this idea can turn into its own permanent node or atomic node. And then productivity would be the MOC, which all of these theories or laws or observations would fall into. So. For this example, let's say we created this note like, okay, this is about Parkinson's law. I'm pretty sure I'm going to use this note again sometime in the future. So let's create Parkinson's law. So I'm going to just click on it because I already put in the correct syntax. So we have a blank fault. So let's just pull through a note template 000. And we can see that we have a data query that pulls Parkinson's law. And then we also have on Parkinson's law, but this then should just be lowercase if we have any logs where we have indicated it as Parkinson's law, or if we have any logs where we reference the name in itself, it would pop up here. But for this one, I think this one was the first one that we referred to as Parkinson's law. So this is our introduction, but we still want to create a we still want to create a permanent note or atomic note. So for this, we can see that on the 25th, we have this, it pulls in this nice little diagram that just shows effort, time, time on the X axis, effort on the Y axis. And it says, if you give yourself eight hours to complete the same task, you're going to use all the eight hours in order to complete the task, but the same task you can complete with a high degree of effort in a short amount of time. So the reasoning behind this is that you should rather bucket or do sprints with your tasks in order to get them done quicker instead of going through the procrastination phase of, oh, I have months to do this task and then you only get to it the last time where you just work a couple of minutes every day. It's not effective. Now we are in live preview and we can see that Parkinson's law net we created. We just pulled in the templates automatically and we have a query that looks like this. Data view, task where it contains cool box and slot, it's madly pulls in from the name. You can also change it to the hashtag that you applied on the specific log. And now we'll have a permanent note. What is it? Parkinson's law says that you waste time if you allocate more time something like that and then you'll have let's say my experience with it the references stuff like that so you'll fill in this note and then as you encounter this parkinson's law you'll come back to this note it's an evergreen note and you can flesh it everything related to parkinson's law so then you basically have your mess this up a little bit but that's fine this needs to be here at the bottom and we have what is it Cool. We can maybe insert a little picture here if we really want to. But yeah, let's just keep it like this. We might want to copy. Just wondering what is going on now. You might want to copy this picture into the, the top of this. So let's actually do it. Let's click on the picture and let's just copy that. And let's go back to Parkinson's. Now we have a picture. What is it? My experience with it. Dot, dot, dot. Other references of books and stuff related to it. And then I'll always have my task log. And as I experience more of this, I'll just incorporate it and see it here with the date because I mostly followed in the notes. But you can pull this in from whichever note that you want. And then I'll say, okay, cool. I have incorporated this in my productivity and not on time management because it could rely or it could fall into time management but let's just click it that i have incorporated it and at the top let's just go with time management and productivity on productivity and we'll just make this our management as well okay so now we have a note we have made links permanent links to a permanent note from our log so this is how you would incorporate or you could have just kept there now let's say that you have the idea of hey we have a note called parkinson's law let's say that we want to create a broader topic note on productivity productivity would be more like a map of content an moc and Parkinson's law would fall within the realm of 
productivity. So let's see how we would do that. We'd create a new node and we'll call it productivity. And then I'm gonna call in my MOC template. And if we go to edit mode to not or switch live preview or source mode, so we can just see the code easier. We can see that on productivity, has on productivity, and then more logs, we have productivity. So it pulls it in. That's all good and well. And if we go back to live preview, just to make it easier on ourselves, what we have here is just two options showing the same thing. On the left hand side, we have the first line of the log that we have inserted. On the right hand side, we have the same thing. So we can see that here we have Ali Abdul's Parkinson's law, cool. And here at the top, we have Ali Abdul, Parkinson's law, but we have the sub bullet points as well. And the reason why it's at the bottom here is because it's checked. But what's cool with this one is you can, in both, you can uncheck it and it would automatically reflect on the other side or wherever the note was taken. From this side, you need to go in if you want to change it, but you can see all the sub bullet points. This one, you can't see the sub bullet points, but you can change it. So here you can change the, the main note and you can change some of the hashtags and stuff within this little editor that the tasks plugin gives you. And here we have everything related to the logs on productivity. So if we just stick on the right hand side, from how to take smart notes, give each task your undivided attention. Cool. Multitasking is not a good idea. I can make another permanent note about multitasking if I want. We can use the Zygarnik effect to advance by the liberty keeping unanswered questions in our mind. So this is something that Richard. For the next one, we can use the Zygarnik effect to our advantage by deliberately keeping unanswered questions in the top of our minds. This is something that Richard Feynman did. And here's a perfect example. There's on log readies that I did not decide when on my Kindle, I did not put a hashtag. I need to click on it and go to it. But on this side, I can just go to this little edit center and fix it. So it gives me room to just concentrate a little bit more on the thing that I'm busy with. So this is something that Richard Feynman did. So this is all good tips and it can all become their permanent notes. And then at the bottom, we have a data query that just looks for the tag productivity. So you can say on productivity, but for this, just to make sure that we capture everything related to productivity, we just say on productivity, you can always expand this query. But what this does, it shows all our permanent notes about productivity. And here we can see there is Parkinson's law, permanent note that we created. Also have Hemingway's bridge, getting things done, time blocking. So from this, we can see that we already have a wealth of information. So if you're talking about productivity in the sense of how to get more things done quicker, what normal uh, loop potholes to, to basically miss or stay clear of what people in the past have experienced and how they managed to overcome those challenges with regards to productivity, you have acquired all those notes that is ready here for you. You don't have to go look for it. It's finding you. So this is the MOC note, which you can then just start to tie a golden thread along all of these notes. And I'm not going to go through it here, but you can basically say, here is a couple of tips that I have been exploring. So time blocking needs to make sure that you manage your time effectively. Parkinson's law is, can be tied into the time blocking permanent note. You can start to link the two because Parkinson's law says you need to do effective time blocking for tasks and those two tie in together. Hemingway bridge is to always end a task that spans over time. Always end a task when your motivation levels are high, when you have meant to carry that task over into the next day so that you don't go sit in front of your computer starting the same old task, but it feels like you need to start from zero again. Rather, what Hemingway did is he will write till he knew exactly where the story was going. And that's where he'll stop and he'll know exactly where to carry on writing the next day because he basically ended on a cliffhanger. Then we have the peak end rule and all the other little notes that we took for ourselves, which you can see, you can already start to create a story out of this. But these permanent notes, because these permanent notes are just a single idea that you can just like do, 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 pop it in. And once you've tied that golden thread of time blocking, why is it important? And you bring in the actual note on time blocking, blocking, and then you can start to draw the information that you have acquired in time blocking. You can go back to time blocking for more information if you think about things that could add to that permanent note. And you can say, why is it important? Time blocking. And you can go to the Parkinson's law and show your reasoning of how that ties into time blocking and you have an article. So I hope this shows you the process.
I go back to the LogRDS image or roadmap. We went through the inputs, why it's important to log, how the logging works, the relationship between the logs and the permanent notes. And you can see if you go to productivity, you don't necessarily just need permanent notes in order to get this done. You can go off of this. You can see that the Zaronic effect, it, it doesn't really say what it is, but this is really something that you can nibble on and then like, okay, I would actually want to explore this a little bit. And then you have this location on your Kindle or the location on the YouTube video that you watch this thing and you can start following in the permanent notes if you feel you need it. There's one on willpower. So if you want a permanent note on willpower, that would more likely be an MOC, but you can see that this, this is really powerful, but the interplay between logs and permanent notes. And then finally, the MOCs is basically bringing these things together. And then from these MOCs, you have an article on productivity from your perspective because these are notes that you have acquired through a period of time through reading through consuming videos through talking to people these are all logs that you have that either stayed here or became permanent notes which would then give output so this is the the structure that i'm playing around with and for myself i have found this to be the best structure i've used so far it definitely won't stay the same as you can see just the normal log structure from our first videos up until now have improved quite a bit. And as the functionality improves, my system will improve with it. And the videos that I bring out would be version one, version two, version three, it would always improve. So for the next videos, I'm going to explore a couple of these topics a little bit more. I'm gonna become a little bit more philosophical on some of the videos as well where I'm going to reiterate them of becoming a creator and not just a consumer. And for my members on Buy Me Coffee, I'll have a kind of a demo working in progress vault, which if you're interested in this whole log system, you can go check it out until I get the official video out and I'll always have a, I like to call an evergreen vault. So I'm going to start building out vaults. That's just a little bit more friendly to use and gives you a little bit of a guideline when you download it. And through time, I'll post updates in those vaults as well with different timestamps. So you can either follow along with the video you're currently watching, and you can also see the extra features that I implemented in those demo vaults, but that is it. That's what I wanted to discuss today. I welcome and appreciate your feedback. With this community, I'm already getting a lot back. So I just want to thank you, especially with the comments where I give a piece of code and people comment back saying, hey, I found a more efficient way to do it. That is why I decided to become a creator of sorts. Is not for you, it's, it's more for me. I, I believe everybody is selfish, but as long as we can help each other in our selfishness, it works. So the selfish nature of putting this out is also benefiting me. So I just want to really thank you guys for participating in something that we all find interesting. But until next time, consider supporting me. All the, the money helps towards my motivational bank. And for those that have supported me in the past, I do appreciate it. Let's strengthen on upon your kin, ladies and gents. Have a good one.